Washington Pod presents Earl Nightingale. This morning in a taxi on my way to the office, I experienced a curious sensation. For no particular reason, I saw myself in the great city in which I live in relation to future time. As the skyscraper in which I have my offices came into view, I pictured its location 5,000 years from now after the entire city would have been torn down and rebuilt, perhaps 50 times or more. I saw myself and the teeming thousands on the street as ancients living in a distant and barbaric past, as we will appear in the ancient history books, if they still use books 5,000 years from now. I saw us as we are today, as the ancient Greeks and Romans and Egyptians must have seen themselves just a short 2,000 or so years ago. Surely the Egyptians of 5,000 years ago felt that their society had reached its virtual peak. The great pyramid of Cheops was built more than 2,500 years before the birth of Christ. The speeding automobiles, trains, and airplanes in which we ride today will be as rude and ludicrous to our progeny 5,000 years from now as the chariots of the ancients appear to us today. World War II will be as primitive and distant and to them as ridiculous as the conquering invaders from Anatolia and the rise of Mycenae as the legends of Homer are to us today. As we study the Bronze Age, their children and historians will study us, the Atomic Age. They'll shake their heads and smile and look with horror and unbelief upon our antics, our inhumanity, and they'll marvel at our ingenuity, too. Einstein will be as famous then as Archimedes, Copernicus, Galileo, and Newton are to us. They'll still read about Thomas Edison and Benjamin Franklin and Abraham Lincoln as we read about Plato and Julius Caesar and Alexander. But try to project yourself forward in time 5,000 years, and from that lofty vantage point look back at us here today. With the miracle of your mind, get in your own time machine and move ahead 50 centuries and try to visualize our world as it will be then. Lean back in your easy chair of the year, oh, let's round it out, the year 7,000. And from that place in time, view your present problems. Look at the way you're doing things, the way you're raising the kids and doing your job. Look at the petty problems that beset you now, the things you're worrying about today. They'll have a tendency to fade right out. And while you're at it, try to imagine what the schools will be like, the homes and clothes. Will men still work, or will machines do all the work while men amuse themselves? Who will win the pennant in the American League in the year 7,000? Or will baseball be extinct along with the hydrogen bomb, a means of warfare inconceivable to men and women 5,000 years from now, as ridiculous and primitive as throwing rocks, as cruel and inhuman a death as by burning at the stake, or being drawn and quartered, or broken on the rack or impaled? Take a ride to 5,000 years from now and think about it. It's free. By getting 5,000 years ahead of your present problems, they have a way of shrinking in size, don't they? You might also get some good money-making ideas. Thank you.